Welcome y'all, it's Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thank you so much for joining us. Today's episode, we're gonna talk about planning equipment. There are many pieces of equipment that are needed or useful for food plotters. Through a lot of the consultations, a lot of the property visits, that a lot of folks don't know what the differences are between all the different pieces of uh, planning equipment that we have. So today we're gonna go over some no-till drills, no-till planters, conventional drills, conventional planters. We're gonna break down the differences, show you what you need to produce which food plots. I do a lot of property visits through the winter, springtime consulting on properties, and I've been getting a lot of questions about no-till drills, no-till planters, conventional till planters, conventional till drills. And it seems to me that there is a lot of confusion among food plotters with what equipment do we need, what does what, what plants what. And so I wanted to make this video, this will make this crystal clear for all of you that have been wondering uh, what's the what are the differences and what are the, some of the key advantages of one to versus another. So I had a client reach out and he sent me a picture and said, hey, is this uh, what I'm looking for? And I started going through the ad and I'm like, he was looking for a no-till planter. Um, and this was a conventional till planter. It was marketed as a no-till planter though. So that's one of the big things that I'm gonna talk about today. What separates a no-till from, from a conventional till and which one do we need? So when we no-till something, basically what we're doing is we're coming in with a herbicide we're spraying to kill all of the weeds and grasses that are on top of the ground, turn them into organic matter, and then we're going down through there and we're planting a very small strip, about an inch and a half wide. That's all we're doing. So all of the organic matter stays on top of the ground, except for the little inch and a half spot that our seeds drop into. There are a ton of benefits to no-till, better water holding capacity, better porosity in the soil, uh, better erosion control from wind or water. The list goes on and on and on with no-till. In my opinion, it's the best management that we can possibly do is no-till. Now, conventional till is where we're gonna go in with a breaking plow, a chisel plow, a tiller, cultivator, a disc, a ripper, some piece of equipment that is going to physically work the soil, turn it over, uh, work it in to basically where the organic matter goes below the soil surface and we're left with solid soil on top. There are benefits to uh, conventional tillage, but there are also a lot of pitfalls with conventional tillage. Conventional tillage is useful when ground doesn't dry, as is the case a lot of times up north when we have a shorter growing season, it is very difficult to wait for that ground to dry out. So if we can catch that ground dry, we can work it, put the organic matter under the soil, and then the sun will hit that ground and will dry it down. I have a lot of these places down in the bottom. We have converted to no-till that used to be all conventional. We do the exact same thing. We go in and we spray it early as we possibly can, even if we have to go in when it's a little wet and we spray it. That's not the best thing that compacts your soil, but it gets the organic matter off of the ground to where the sun can dry the ground down where you can plant it. Now, one huge pitfall to watch out for when you're using conventional till is working the ground wet. Wes, how do I know if the ground's too wet? If you can take the soil and you can form it into a ball, it's too wet to work, too wet to plant. The old tale is if you grab it and you try to work, it should bust all to pieces on you. You should not be able to form that into a ball. You form that into a ball, go to the house, come back another couple days, try again. When you're working the soil, if you work it wet, you are asking for a nightmare with compaction. Uh, basically what happens is that soil is wet so it will pack. Essentially you're making that ball by packing it. The wetter the soil is, the better the chance is to damage the soil properties, okay? So essentially when the ground is dry, it has a lot of protection against compaction. When the ground is wet, there is much less protection there. So what happens is you go in and you compact the soil and then it finally dries out and all of a sudden you've turned that ground into concrete. That is really difficult for the roots, really difficult or maybe even impossible for the roots to try to grow through. And then all of a sudden you end up with a bad food plot. I have got a no-till planter behind me and I'm gonna show you right now what a no-till planter looks like. 
what you're looking for in a no-till planter. The no-till planter should have coulters. What the coulters do is they cut the ground. Okay, so they're, go they're the first piece of equipment that goes through the field. And what that does, it cuts a trench in the ground to where our seed's gonna go. Then to come behind it, we have the double disc openers. There's, that's two disc openers running just like this. They're gonna open the soil even more and the seed will drop down behind them. Behind them, we have the gauge wheels are right behind them and those are going to control how deep we are planting. And then finally, we have the closing wheels and the closing wheels are meant to close that trench up to where the seeds are packed down in there, minimal air pockets to where it can grow off and, and be a successful food plot. So what you're looking for for that no-till is that coulter. And this is gonna be drills or planters. Both are going to have no-till coulters if they are a no-till planter or drill, okay? They're always gonna have that front coulter. If you are looking at buying a planter or a drill and there is no front coulter, you will do not have a no-till planter or drill. You have a conventional till. The difference is a conventional till is not going to work in a no-till environment. Why? Because that ground's not getting cut open by that coulter. It's going to place those seeds on top of the ground. A conventional till planter was used many moons ago when, when no-till wasn't even a thing. So they would go in, they would chisel the ground, almost like a garden. So they would get it worked up like a garden. Well. At that point, these planters, these conventional planters could go in the ground. It's not nearly as hard as working no-till ground. Be very careful looking out for a conventional till planter versus a no-till planter. You can use a no-till planter in conventional tillage. So if you wanted to go in and work a piece of ground as I do with my alfalfa when I plant it, you can use a no-till drill but you can't do it the opposite way. You can't use a conventional till in a no-till environment. It has to have that coulter to cut that ground open. Drills are going to be the exact same way. You have no-till drills, you have conventional drills. Conventional drills are used on ground that is worked up, such as like a garden type area to where that drill will get in the ground. Then you have no-till drills. They have coulters on the bottom, they have the closing wheels, everything's going to be the same except they're going to have that coulter on the front. The conventional drills or planters will have long chutes that run and that's what makes the trench open and then it closes the trench up behind it, okay? Where a no-till planter is always gonna have the closing wheels and the coulter. What's the difference between a drill and a planter? So essentially a planter is set up typically for wide rows. So 30, 36 inch, I think there's even some down south that are 40 inch rows. These are for plots that need better uh, spacing. So such as corn. Corn does not do well if you plant three plants of corn just like this together. It's going to do much better if you plant a seed here, a seed here, and a seed here all spaced six, seven inches apart. Corn does much better. It competes against itself, makes the crop grow, and gets that competing for that sunlight. With a planter, essentially what's happened is you have a meter spinning inside there. And without getting super technical with it, there is a little piece that picks up a kernel of corn, a kernel of soybeans, whatever it is that you're planting, and it fits basically in a little hole. There's a little thing that closes down on top of that seed. As that meter spins, it drops out. Much better for getting one seed in one spot instead of trying to put two or three in. For a no-till planter, that is going to plant things such as corn, grain sorghum, soybeans, peas, can all be planted with a planter. Basically, you're looking at bigger seeds. You can get different meters uh, inside there for smaller seeds, but for the most part, we're looking at wider rows and we are looking at planting things such as corn, soybeans, grain sorghum, uh, peas, things like that. There are no-till planters on the market go down to a 15 inch row. Kinsey makes one. So that is something that would be useful for soybeans where you can get on narrow rows. You can also take a 30 inch or a 40 inch, 36 inch, you're planting soybeans and you want the narrower rows, which I recommend, you can go back and you can plant one direction and then you can split the middles 
and go back and plant the other direction. Instead of making a 36 inch row, you just made an 18 inch row. I've had a lot of good luck with that. That's much more difficult for the deer to overgraze. Those beans get taller. It's more difficult for those whitetails to walk through. On 30 inch rows on something like soybeans, they can walk right down the rows easily, super easy, and just graze till their heart's content. So for corn, grain sorghum, uh, some soybeans were on 30 inch rows and that's what a no-till planter, which is right behind me, is going to do. A no-till drill. Okay, so these are things such as the Tar River, Great Plains, Rimlinger, Genesis is, is targeted towards the food plotters. There's a, several different no-till drills on the market. No-till drills are based on, on narrow rows. Most of the time they're on seven and a half inch row spacing. And a no-till drill is going to plant most all of the food plots that a food plotter needs to plant. It's going to plant a wide variety, such as soybeans, peas, clovers, alfalfas, cereal grains, uh, you name it, other than something like corn. Uh, and I've, I've never tried planting corn with a no-till drill. Believe I could make that happen by cutting off some of the rows, shutting off some of those sections. I believe I could make that happen. Uh, but I have never tried it myself, so I'm not gonna say for sure. But really, corn is about the only food plot that I can't plant with a no-till drill or that I never have no-till drill. It is built for more food plot type oriented. Some of the cons of a drill is obviously they're, a lot, they're very expensive. They're more, way more expensive than an old two or four row planter. They're much more versatile though when it comes to planting, you know, brassicas, clovers, alfalfas, cereal grains, soybeans, peas, lab lab, um, you name it, they can pretty much plant it and they are really good at doing that. Another con of a no-till drill is, it, essentially a no-till drill is a controlled spill when it's going through the field. It is not like a planter and it does not have that meter. It has a shaft that turns and as that shaft turns, seed falls through. So it's, you essentially close it up if you want less seed coming through, you open it up if you want more. It's not nearly as precise as a no-till planter is. Uh, it's a controlled spill is what a drill is, and it does a good job. I use a no-till drill to plant my alfalfa, brassicas, to drill into standing corn to plant brassicas and cereal grains. It does a phenomenal job uh, at not working that ground and getting that seed where you need it. Most of the seeds that we're using the no-till drill for are little bitty tiny seeds. We don't want them deep. We essentially want them about a quarter inch deep or right on the surface, right before a good heavy rain event. You will get a good germination with a no-till drill. So for most folks uh, that I'm recommending on their property, I'm recommending the planter. Uh, I'm recommending both if they can afford both, but if they can only only afford one, I'm recommending the planter because I can plant a corn and I can also plant the soybeans, the peas, things like that with the planter. And then I can work my ground or do strictly broadcast over the top, 100% no-till, and I can plant a lot of cereal grains, clovers, uh, brassicas without ever working the ground. If I need to work the ground, such as the case with say an alfalfa food plot, I can do a conventional till on that and then I can broadcast seed. For most people, I really like they're a lot cheaper. They are extremely simple, not super complicated uh, pieces of equipment. Very handy to have. The drills are also very handy to have. I wished I had one. I will get one before another year. I used one last year a lot. Uh, for my food plots and boy, I really liked it. I just don't really like the price tag. That's the worst part about a no-till drill. Uh, a lot of you have seen that I've showed you how to get a no-till drill for a hundred bucks from the local farm service agency or NRCS office. They have those drills for rent. That's the way I got mine last year. Planted several acres with it and it was a phenomenal piece of equipment and I really like to have my own. Worst part about those is when it gets that time of year where they're getting, where a lot of people are planting, there can be a pretty good list waiting to get that planter, even if there's two or three drills uh, in the counties. If you need extra help with your food plots or setting up your farms, I have a website set up, www.diyfoodplotpro.com. I've got a yearly subscription. I also have a boots on the ground visit. 
uh, that I am now starting to schedule for the 2025 year. We will start in January doing property visits and consultations. If you're interested in getting on that, uh, hit me up, send me a message. I'll be glad to get you on the list. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Smash that like and subscribe button.